Hey guys, when you get an opportunity, like, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to this channel, and check out everything down in the description box, the links and everything I've got going on down there. I'm actually trying to grow my channel, so if you could share this video, I would really appreciate it. God bless you all, and now let's get on to the real thing that this video is all about. Hey guys, it's Elaine, the Ninja Life Coach, and welcome to my channel today. Today is Wig Talk Tuesday, so sit back, grab yourselves a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm back, and today I'm wearing Felix by Sister Wigs in Indigo Swirl. Today, let's talk a little bit about how different wigs can impact the way that we feel. Everyone who has been wearing wigs for any length of time knows that there are certain wigs that we can put on and we just feel good about ourselves. We feel confident, we feel happy, we, we have a little extra spring in our step. And I've got to say, Felix by Sister Wigs is one of them. This wig just makes me feel good. And I think because it's such a fun, uh, funky color, this wig really makes me feel confident. For some reason, it does, I just love the wig. And we all have those wigs that are our favorites. Now. Conversely, we all have those wigs. If you have any wigs or you spent any time in the wig wearing world's world, or if you've ever made a bad wig purchase, we all have those wigs that we hold on to and we don't know why. We're like, well, maybe if I do this, it'll, it'll look good. Maybe if I try this, I can wear it or try that. Maybe I will, you know, it looks so good on Lulu in the wig group. Ladies, I want to encourage you, if that's you and you've got wigs that are sitting in a box at your house and you keep talking to yourself about the wig, trying to talk yourself into keeping that wig, I'm just going to give you the same advice that Elsa said on the mountain at Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. If that wig does not make you feel good, I don't care if you paid $2,000 for that wig. It's time to put the thing up for sale. It truly is. If you've done everything humanly possible and you still don't feel good when you put that thing on your head, it's time to it's time to let it bless somebody else. That was a hard lesson for me to learn because I felt like I had spent money on these things and I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? I've spent X amount of dollars trying to find a wig. I can't get my money back. Well, no, you can't get your money back, but after a while, you do develop a sense of what's going to look good for you and what's going to make you feel a certain way or look a certain way or what's going to make you happy. And until you get to that point, um, anything you purchase up to that point could be a little dicey. So I would really recommend, and I'm going to put in a plug here for um, Wig Talk Wednesday, and it's Mimi's Boutique. Those ladies are great and they do consultations by Zoom. So if you are struggling with that, I'm going to ask you to contact them. Let them set you up for a consultation to show you what to do and tell you what may look good for your face shape. Now, I realize this particular wig that I've got on today is probably not a wig that's the best for my face shape. It does make my face look a little round, but you know what? When I put this little blue number on my head, I really don't care because she makes me feel good. I've got wigs that people have told me I look great in and I put the wig on and it's just kind of like, I don't like this wig. There's nothing about this wig that I like. This wig doesn't make me feel good. This sticks out in the back. This does this, this does that. And I see every flaw that that wig has. But you know what? When I put something like little Felix here on my head, she could have a hole the size of Michigan burned in the side of her head and I wouldn't see it because I love this wig. And this wig makes me feel good, and this wig, most of all, makes me feel confident and vibrant. And that is two big things for me that I need to feel every day of my life. Ladies, I spent m much of my life not being self-confident, not having, having zero confidence in myself, and not really knowing what I wanted to do, mainly because, um, through a large portion of my life, I was involved in a situation where I had a narcissist involved in my life. And when you've got that going on, you can't really have an independent thought. So once I was free from that situation and I started discovering a little bit more who I really am, 
then it's important for me to feel that way every day. And therefore, I'm going to make choices about, and, and in knowing those choices, that's something I always ask myself when I wear a wig. How do I feel when I put it on? Do I feel confident or do I feel mousy? <laughs> do I feel like I can go out and take on the world? Or do I feel like the world is going to take on me? Am I going to eat that dragon today or is that dragon going to eat me? Well, you know what? In an indigo blue wig, I could eat that dragon one bite at a time if I have to. So when you're buying a wig and you're considering making a wig purchase, take into mind several things. And here, I'm going to give you a couple of things. Take into mind your face shape. If Take into mind if you are a more rounder, rounder face, believe it or not, pixies actually can look really good if you have a round face. They can actually elongate your face because it's drawing the attention up, as long as it's not real flat. It's got a little permatease and it's poofy like right in here. Sometimes pixies can actually make you look a little bit longer. Something that curves around, gently curves around your face like this can actually make your face look longer as well if you have a round face. If you have a square face, you're going to want to choose something that's a little softer. And the same if you have a long face, you're going to, you know, you're going to want to do something else that's going to make your face look shorter. But since I do have such a round face, if I take something over to the side a little bit like this, that does make my face look longer. Take into account your face shape. Your hairdresser can sure tell you what to do. If you've got a hairdresser, they can tell you the style that would look great on you. And if nothing else, get a face app and start just playing with that so you can kind of know what to do and what you're going to like and enjoy. The next thing you're going to want to think about is the color. Now, some ladies like to stick with the same color of hair that they've had before, and that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. If that's what you're comfortable in and you don't want people to know you have on a wig, go for it. I say go for whatever makes you happy. But if you like something a little bit more adventurous, then by all means, experiment with something. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you do that on your first, you know, your first day out as a wig wearer. Now, I did because I decided when I was gonna do that, I got a platinum wig from Amazon, white. Totally different than my hair was, my hair was red. And I wore it out. And I wore it to the Home Depot, I wore it to work, I wore it just different places. That's the kind of person I am. But not everybody thinks like that, and that's okay. You do what is comfortable for you, sister. If you don't want people to know you're wearing a wig, that's perfectly okay. Get something that looks natural and close to your own hair. That's perfectly fine. But if you're one of these free spirits and you just don't really care, then do that. Do whatever you're comfortable with right first off. When you get ready to really get serious and you're starting to think about getting serious and you've had some experience in picking out your wigs and you kind of know, you start learning, you know, start watching videos and you read up on it and you know the difference between synthetic and human hair. You can tell what a lace front is. You know what a monotop is. You know these things. You know extended nape. You know what all this is. When you start learning things and you know these types of things, then you're ready to progress to maybe a little bit better wig. The first wig that I ever was serious about that I wore on vacation was a little brown wig. It cost $49. The next wig that I had that um, I wore out when I got back from vacation, the platinum wig was the one I chose to wear out to work and to the Home Depot and out and about on a Monday when I went to work. And the reason I did that was because I was like, you know what? I'm going to go big or go home. I want people to know I have on a wig. I want them to right off the bat say, okay, this doesn't look good. And this does look good, this is whatever. I wanted the comments right then. I didn't want to, you know, wait and have to sift through, oh, is this, this looks natural, that looks natural. I didn't want to go through all that. So I was right up front and said, I don't care if it looks natural. I like the wig. And people kind of accepted that. Now, my family didn't so much, but, my, but people that I, in the business world, kind of accepted that. And people that, um, I ran across, they, you know, and my friends, they kind of accepted that because they were used to strange behavior from me. But 
what I would encourage you to do, if your first, if this is your first wig, and I've said this before, I wouldn't spend a fortune on my first wig. I wouldn't because you don't know what you want yet. You know what you think you want, but you don't know until you put that wig on your head if you're going to actually like that. All you've done maybe is see a picture. Remember, when you see a picture of a wig styled in a catalog or online, they've spent probably an hour and a half, two hours getting that wig to look like that. They've not just taken it out of the box and shaken it and plopped it on the fore on the lady's head. They've done. They've spent time styling it. So until you get the hang of it, especially within with synthetics, I would not invest a ton of money. I wouldn't go more than seventy dollars on my first wig. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. And if you're on a real tight budget, I wouldn't go over thirty. And I would just wear that and see how that goes. Now, after you've had some time under your belt and you know what things are. At that point, you are ready to pull the trigger on a better wig. Now, you can go high-end, two, $3,000 on a hand-tied, you know, you know, custom cap. You can do that if you want to. And you, after, after you've had some time under your belt, you're ready to do that. But please don't do that right up front unless you can actually try on the wig and look at it on your set. Because just about any wig that you're going to get, right off the bat, it's going to have too much hair. It's, it's just going to, because especially if your hair is thin, you're going to think, oh my Lord, I look like a gorilla. Look at all this hair. And it takes a while to get used to seeing yourself with hair. And it takes a while for your family and friends to get used to seeing you with hair. If they're used to, if, if your friends are like mine and are used to seeing my miserable mop of a hair that's like three strands that I, you know, <laughs> poof up to try to get it to look like I've got a lot of hair. So it is a bit of a challenge and a bit of a learning curve. So when you're ready to make that step and you start actually purchasing better wigs, there is a world of difference in better wigs than cheap wigs. I love my cheap wigs. I'm not saying anything about them. They're, I love them. I love my $17 Amazon wig. There are two of them right back there, a pink one and a blue one. But you know what? Even between those wigs and Felix, that was $80, I can tell a difference in the fibers. I can tell a difference in the way the cap fits on my head. And from Felix, when I put on my Ellen Villa wigs, there's a world of difference between an $80 wig and a $250 wig. The world is vast. But if you'll go slow and cautiously into this, and I don't mean take a, I mean, I don't mean take six months to pick out your first wig. That's way too long. You don't need to do that because you'll be frustrated. What I mean is go slow in, in it. Do some research before you pull that trigger on that $2,000 wig or even that $200 wig. Do some research. Buy a cheap wig or two. Buy something like Felix in that price range or less. And see how you like it. If you've never had a wig on your head, it's a, it's a whole adjustment period. So just get used to that. So once you have a whole bunch of wigs in your wig arsenal, you will know after a while when you put that wig on your head, I love this wig. And with me, I, get, I have tried so many wigs over the last couple of years because manufacturers send me wigs. I pretty well know now, okay, I'm going to like this, or you know what, this is not me. Now, that doesn't mean I give the wig a bad review just because I don't think it looks good on me. That's not fair. It, it, that isn't fair. Because some of the wigs that I review and give a good review, and you all com compliment me on the wig, and I'm like, I do not like this wig on me. But I do love the color. I think the cap construction is perfect. I think the wig is cute, and I think it would look good on somebody else, but just not me. And after a while, you kind of learn that. It's just kind of like you have to try. It's kind of like you have to kiss a lot of toads before you find your handsome prince. And it's the same way in the wig wearing world. Now, currently, I have about six wigs that are my favorites of the moment. This is one of them. This is one that if I've got to go out and I want to do something just quick and fun, or if I want to go out to dinner with the girls, I'll wear Felix. If I want to look a little bit more professional, I've been wearing my Noriko Sky 
back there. If I want to look a little bit feisty or a little bit um, trendy, I will wear Ellen Villa Girl Mono. If I want to look, you know, just fun, I'll wear the pink wig back there. I kind of am a mood wig wearer. You know, it kind of depends on what mood I'm in at that particular moment as to what lands on my head on any given day. So, not everyone is like that, though. Some people are much more methodical about it, which I think that's really good if you can be. But when you get ready to wear that wig, the questions you need to ask yourself first, how does this wig make me feel? And sister, I don't care the price tag on that wig. If it doesn't make you feel the way you want to feel, if it doesn't make you feel good, that's not the wig for you. It really isn't. I have just culled my wigs out and donated and sold some of my wigs. And the reason is I had some wigs in there that I had not had on my head literally in almost a year. And I had not worn them since the review and I had good intentions. I was like, okay, I love this wig. I'm going to wear it. But I found myself reaching for other wigs because I didn't particularly, it was like, oh, I don't know. I love this wig, but this one makes me feel a little bit better. This one makes me feel a little bit more confident. And when I do that, then I am picking the wig based on the amount of confidence that it's going to make me, make me feel that day. And how does it make me feel? Do I feel sexy? Just because I'm 65 years old, ladies, doesn't mean that I don't want to feel sexy. I still want to feel sexy. I'll probably want to feel sexy when I'm 90 years old. I'll probably be, you know, on my deathbed and, you know, grabbing a hold of a bottle of Miss Clairol in one hand and a diet tea in the other hand and saying, do I look sexy, darling? I mean, I will probably, I will be that one. <laughs> I will be that one doing that. Because I, I think, and I think that with us ladies, we always want to feel vibrant. Just because we grow older doesn't mean we don't, that doesn't mean we feel different inside than we did when we were 16 years old. The difference is not in here. The difference is in here, in our heads. Our hearts are the same. So if you feel good about that wig, don't let anybody, don't let anybody mess up your mojo on it. The only people you have to please in this life is you, your husband, and God, most of all. Now, if your husband just really objects to a wig for some particular reason, you may want to work something out with him on that. But at the end of the day, the wig is yours. It's your wig. It's your head. You're the one that has to enjoy what you have on, not your husband. Maybe you can say, well, hey, darling, I'll wear the one you like tonight, okay, when we go to bed. <laughs> but I'm wearing this one today. But don't you worry, wink, wink, I'll take care of you tonight. So, I mean, you may have to do something like that. I don't know. You know, I, I really honestly don't think that most men are that picky about what's on their wives' heads. Now let me do so, let me put this caveat in here. If you're married and your husband really objects to something that you're wearing, I, I really think you should try to work with him on it and say, okay, what is it you find objectionable? What do you not like? And just work with him a little bit on it. But if he is someone who constantly tries to control not just your hair, but everything you do and your hair, I think you really need to take a good hard look at that relationship and you may really need to, to do some some talking your way through that. Most men really don't care. I, there was a line from the movie, Eat, Pray, Love, which is a movie with Julia, Julia Roberts. And I think this is a great line from this movie. And this girl was really concerned over gaining 10 pounds. And Julia Roberts asked her, has a man ever, when you were naked in a room, has a man ever left? And she said, well, no. And she said, well, then basically don't worry about it. So it's the same premise with our husbands. Most men and most husbands really do not care that much about what's on top of your head. They want you to be happy with yourself because most men are attracted to strong, confident, vibrant women. And when you feel that way, you will project that. So if you have a man who is constantly putting you down about your hair, whether it's your biological hair or your wig, 
I think you really need to explore that because that could really be a red flag in the relationship and something you may need to work through with that person or you may really need to take a second look at that relationship and just kind of see, okay, we need to make some adjustments here. Now, I'm certainly not advocating to leave your marriage if your husband doesn't like your wig. I'm not saying anything like that. But if you have someone that you're with that's constantly nitpicking you on areas where you they may perceive that you are not confident, then that person doesn't have your best interest at heart, at heart whether it's your husband, your family, or, or whoever it is. So that may be a time to have some dialogue and say, okay, I perceive you're doing this to me every time I wear this or, or when I do this or when I try to move forward with my hair loss. We need to have a conversation about this. And sometimes it's as simple as having that dialogue. And if they are just adamant that you that they don't want you to wear a blue wig, but they're fine with everything else, then, you know, maybe that may be your time to say, well, you know what, I can live without a blue wig. You know, I'll wear the pink one instead today. You know, I don't know what the answer is. That's something you'll have to work out between you and your husband. I don't know what that answer is. But I do know this. You have to feel good with what you have on your head. You have to walk with a spring in your step and you have to be confident in that. And whatever that takes, you need to have that. You need to have the support that you need when you put that wig on your head. And that's pretty much the end of that story. Listen, you guys, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope you have enjoyed Wig Talk Tuesday. God bless you all. Love you guys. Maranatha.